Semantic Trees in Scepter can hold both code and data. So what I want to show you is what we call a run tree. A run tree is like a it's a it's a code execution environment. It's kind of like a stack frame in that it has the code itself that will be run as well as the parameters um, that that code will be run against. So I'm going to expand up this tree so we can see it. We've got the parameters themselves and we've got um, some process. Now I'll turn on the uh, structural definition um, so you can actually see what, what the structure of the items are as well as their semantic meaning. So the parameter is a list in this case the list of one item that's going to be called for this process. The process is concatenation of string. What um, this what this tree demonstrate is is a simple taking of a user profile and building a mailing label out of it that would be suitable for printing or something like that. So the parameter is a, this user profile. Let me describe the the input to the process a little bit. Um, uh, a user profile is constructed out of a name and an address and an email. And a name is a first name and a last name and an address is a street address, a city, a state, a zip, and a country. And when you're going to print a mailing label out, what you want to do is pluck out parts of that um, structural element and concatenate them together. So our process is just actually a set of nested um, uh, concatenate strings so that you can see what it looks like, as well as a return type of what the semantic type is that will be returned, which we've here called the mailing label. So I'll open up the tree to the full depth so that we can see how it runs. Now what you're seeing here is a rendering, a visualization of snapshots of the trees of, of a running tree from the Scepter system. So what we've done in our testing environment is just spit out a bunch of trees as the system runs and then we're using the D3 visualization library to create a nice picture um, kind of like an introspection of what would be going on internally in memory. You could think of this as a hex dump of the running code, but since the running code is not bytes and words, it's semantic trees, you get to look at it this way. So what we'll see as we run this is that um, you have these items here which are the parameter references. This is the way in which in your stack frame, in essence, you're, you're copying values of variables that were um, called in to the uh, running code so that when you're writing code you can refer to parts of your parameters. Uh, the, so we call a parameter reference, its structural type is a tree path. A tree path is a reference to a part of another tree. So in this case the path is a numeric um, path down the tree from the top to the parts that need to be substituted in place. So now what I'm going to do is actually step us through the running code. Um, what you see at first there was a replacement of the um, parameter references. Then you see, oops, I just turned off the labels for um, it maybe to look a little more clear. Uh, then you see the reduction of one process as one step of the reduction of the code. This is as if the CPU is running. Now we have some more parameter reference replacements. And uh, now we'll see the concatenate string run again and reduce and finally we'll have the last reduction and then cleaning up of the whole quote stack frame again there's not a separate stack it operates all as one a semantic tree can act as um, a semantic stack at the same time as the code reduces so there you have your mailing label as the output so this provides a sense of how you can use semantic trees as an environment for holding and running code uh, in a very interesting way.